Okay, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about mallet finger, which can also be called baseball um, finger or extensor tendon injury of the distal interphalangeal joint. Um, and basically it occurs when there is damage um, to the extensor tendon past the DIP. Um, so there is a classification system called Doyle's classification that basically um, separates into four categories, these mallet finger injuries um, from anywhere from having the closed injury with, an, uh, with or without an avulsion fracture all the way to having like a fracture at the growth plate in kids um, or like fractures involving like different percentages of the um, bone. So most commonly um, you see this in young to middle aged adults um, but it in younger adults, it tends to be males that have this injury, but in older, or sorry, males that have this injury when the injury is from like a high energy kind of trauma, but if it's a low energy trauma, it's actually older females who tend to kind of have this. Um, and then if you need an outcome tool, you can use the Crawford criteria, assessment of mallet finger outcomes, or a Buna and Brown criteria. Um, the onset um, can normally kind of happen where the mechanism of injury can happen um, like it happens a lot with sports which is why it's also called baseball um, finger it can happen with basketball like any contact sports with kids it can happen with crush injuries like if they get their finger caught in the door or something um, and then also like it can happen like if you accidentally cut through um, your finger with a knife low energy activities um, Common ones include putting on socks and actually making the bed. Um, so aggravating factors um, would just be trying to put the finger into hyperextension and then just sudden movements into that hyperextension. And also um, the main treatment with this is wearing a splint. And so if that splint gets wet and there's water, that will be extremely aggravating and cause um, integumentary issues. Easing factors is um, rest, ice, NSAIDs, and elevation. Um, and then as far as the 24 hour pattern, pain is typically there at the injury, um, but uh, and there'll be inflammation, but after that, you can expect less pain after the first few days, like in the inflammation resolving, um, unless if they're reporting pain, you probably wanna check the skin. Um, and then, as far as the physical or precautions um you want to have a limited exam if you don't know if there's like bony involvement um and you actually want to use a tuning fork to test for like maybe a fracture before going into um any like accessory motion testing um and you should also really defer all therapy other than cold, moda cold modalities until the patient has worn a splint between six and 12 weeks. Um, as far as the physical exam, you will see like a lag, um, an extensor lag um, past the DIP joint. Um, most likely you'll also probably see like swelling, bruising, maybe a laceration depending on the mechanism um, just because the finger will be flexed because there is unopposed flexion. Um, active movement testing, they won't be able to extend their finger. And then passively, you should be able to extend their finger without resistance. Um, as far as resistance testing, again, just use that tuning fork first. Um, and then deferring accessory motion testing, no reason to do a neuro screen. Special test, um, there is a mallet finger test and there is also a tuning fork test that you can do with a stethoscope, um, whether or not they have swelling. And then as far as palpation, you would expect some tenderness. Other um, diagnoses that you might have to rule out with this is the swan deck deformity, the DIP joint osteoarthritis, Kerner deformity, and Seymour lesion. So all those things might kind of look similar to begin with. Um, as far as diagnostic imaging, Definitely a radiograph can be indicated um, to see the alignment of the bones and also just to see if there is a fracture involved. Um, as far as 
things that would warrant a referral. Um, if you see like a detached nail, that is just an infection risk. Um, if it's an open fracture, like it's very obvious they might need surgery, so that would need to be seen by a physician. Um, also just in general, like if children have this, um, because they are still growing and everything, it would probably be good to see by a physician. And then if you see any like skin ulcerations from the split. Um, as far as surgical indicators, um, generally that's recommended when it is displaced or subluxed. Um, but really I think that from what I found, surgical options and um, splinting have really similar outcomes. So. That is about everything for Mallet Finger.